Michael Amponsan from Halco City in China. Michael, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, sir. And yourself? Very good. I'm doing fine. Um, we called on you today because people are worried here in Ghana. They want to find out with uh, this coronavirus that's uh, spreading mm. in China. How bad is it? Mm. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I would want to say um, a very good day to everyone and all your viewers across the globe. Yes, the Wuhan coronavirus happens to be one of the most devastating epidemic that has befallen us in China in recent times. Um, one would say that um, how different it from the others China or any other country might have perceived over the years. I think for the past weeks, you might have heard um, different reportage about this virus and a lot and lot of concern drawing from the medical and scientific world as to how um, government and research teams could contain this virus. Yes, it is dangerous as we've been told and highly contagious. And so it has sort of brought the whole China to a standstill as I speak with you even within common vicinities, it will be very difficult to see individuals going on their usual activity. And so it has affected almost every sector of living here in China. And so that's how bad and that's how uh, the extent to which this virus has before us. We see pictures of people walking around with masks on, and I see you don't have a mask on. Why is that? That's true. My mask is right beside me here because I'm alone here. And so uh, pretty there, there wouldn't be the need for me to be with a mask. Those pictures you are seeing are true. And almost everyone is trying to put up a barrier because as we have been told that uh, the mode of transmission of this virus is basically through droplet infection. And so you see you, people using this mask to prevent any form of droplet from other people and uh, getting onto their skin services or their mucosa layer. Also to prevent deers from getting to other people. But when you are alone, like I am now, definitely you would have to rest yourself. And so basically when you are going out, when you are moving into the crowd to a shop, on the road or anywhere, it is pretty advisable to be uh, with your face mask. And let me put on record that face mask is also in a shortage here as I speak to you. You wouldn't get it in shops and even uh, drug shops or pharmacies because of the mad rush for it as of now. Do people have one or two of them or just uh, yeah, this, the sheer number of people going to buy it? That's what has created a shortage. The, the shortage is because of the alarming situation of the virus. The reportage about it um, brought a sort of panic, if you like to have it when people would want to have it in larger quantities for families, for friends to have it in stock because most of these face masks are disposable. It's a single usage. And so there will be the need for you to stock up so that you could use it um, as and when you need them. From where you sit, is China winning the fight or losing the fight against coronavirus? Um, I would say China is definitely winning the fight. Um, if you look at the updates we are being given, um, as at about four hours back, when I checked with 
um, the intel from the medical team that are handling this situation. And the number of cured cases has risen to about 270 cured cases. And so it tells you that the state of affairs from last week till now, maybe the, the rate is a little bit slower because we were expecting that by now we should be having a vaccine or something that would give us the confidence to go out. But um, from my perspective, I think it's encouraging and that in the next few days, we hope to come out of this whole sort of um, situation. Okay, what about the Ghanaian community? Has there been any deaths that you know of within the Ghanaian community throughout China? Within the Ghanaian community, no. By the grace of God, we haven't um, had any confirmed case of any Ghanaian. Even in the foreign community, we've only had one Pakistani in Guangzhou City, Guangdong province. That is what um, the news and uh, the updates we've had so far. But for the Ghanaian community, so far, um, we yeah. are experiencing zero percent confirmed case among okay, us. Okay, so no Ghanaian, no Ghanaian or no African has been a victim of this coronavirus yeah. that you know. Okay, That's right. very good. That's right. what, what, what would you say about the public education by the Chinese authorities? Yeah, I would say that, that the Chinese authorities are, are not sleeping. If you look at their proactiveness, almost even in communities, in my community where I live, you walk about a hundred meter distance and you meet health volunteers having sort of a, a, a mini barrier. If it's a, a bicycle, a, a car or a motorbike you are riding, they would want to stop you and even take your temperature by the roadside every hundred meters within this community. And they are trying as possible to give education on the television sets, even on our individual handsets, our SIM card, registered SIM cards. There is almost an update every two hours warning people okay. about precautionary measures we need to take. And so I think it's pretty good. Very good. What about the Ghanaian embassy in Beijing? What kind of support have they provided? Well, the embassy in Beijing has been on almost um, an up-to-date sort of um, interaction with the Ghanaian community here. His Excellency Ambassador has been on platforms with write-ups, with um, releases from the embassy assuring, giving us some hot code that we contact immediately. We hear of any suspected case about a Ghanaian. Also, with that of the student front, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ghana mission in Beijing has donated the amount of 50,000 yuan to be given to um, the students in the city, Wuhan city, uh, the epicenter of this whole epidemic. And other cities around, because um, as of now, a lot and lot of people, most cities have been locked down, including Wuhan city itself. And so it's difficult okay. getting ourselves toiletry and other basic needs. And so the embassy came in at this crucial moment through the student leadership to help by purchasing some of these terms for these Ghanaians wherever they may find themselves. So, so far, um, this has been um, the intervention from the Ghana embassy in Beijing. Okay, final question. Do you see the need for Ghanaians uh, evacuation of Ghanaians from China? Um, 
From where I sit, I think that uh, we would need to look at the issue of evacuation very critically because we this is a country of about 1.6 billion people. And Wuhan city, the epicenter, houses about 11 million people. Now, the headcount of Ghanaians in Wuhan city is giving us about 151 Ghanaians in that city. If you do an um, evacuation of these 151 Ghanaians in there, onto or into a population of 30 million people without proper scrutiny, if we don't have the right tools to quarantine them for research purposes and see, because as of now, we do not know who is housing um, this um, infection or this virus. We are told that the incubation period for this virus is three to seven days. But the deadly as that, even when someone having started exhibiting the symptoms, the person can still transmit this virus onto another person. And so it's sort of a worry. As of now, yes, governments, some governments have taken steps to evacuate their citizens back home. But um, I would want our Ghanaian authorities to look at this very, very carefully because um, not just evacuation, if we are evacuating, then we should be looking at where we are taking this 151 Ghanaians to. Are we um, sort of equipped enough to monitor them so that we don't sort of injure our population back home? This is a public health concern. And so evacuation, yes, it may be an option, but I would want us to look at it, uh, have a second look at it. Okay, so when I mentioned evacuation, you actually referred to the epicenter of the disease. So uh, am I, are you suggesting that people in other parts of China are not as exposed as those who are in the epicenter of the uh, uh, virus? People in other sides of the city or other places in China are equally exposed. In my province, for instance, as of now, our confirmed cases has risen to 40, 40 confirmed cases, and we've gotten one death case as of now. There's just a, a very small province compared to where uh, Wuhan is. And so, yes, we are all exposed, but um, in a question of other people outside Wuhan, um, I don't think will be that necessary at this time. Okay. Once the um, authorities are doing all they can, once we are taking precautionary measures, all we hope and pray that science and technology will be put to its maximum bare so that we can have a lasting solution to it. We can return back to our our uh, duties, work, education, and what have you, so that life will return to normalcy. That is what we hope for. Okay, what's your final message to your brothers and sisters at home uh, in Ghana who are worried about your well-being or the well-being of the Ghanaian community in China? What would you say to them? All right. Thank you very much. Um, I would want to say that, yes, indeed, we are in hard times, and it is one of the difficult times, as I said earlier on. But we should calm ourselves. Uh, the situation is being contained by the Chinese authorities and the Ghanaian um, embassy here in Beijing. And so no, no time, or it isn't time for forces. It isn't time for alarmists to go about and spreading uh, rumors and what have you. Let's all keep our fingers crossed and hope. If you have a relative or a friend, a family member here, in China, you can as well contact this fellow. Even if you are not getting any response at that material moment, it isn't out of anything so devastating. Authorities are trying their very best to sure that this um, virus 
um, is brought under control. And so everyone should just pray for us here in China. And we hope that within the few days, uh, we will come out of this even stronger and better. So we have been speaking with Michael mm -hmm. Mponsa uh, from Haku City in China. Michael is a member of the media committee of the National Union of Ghana Students China. Michael, thank you so much yeah. for giving us the update.